All right, saints of God, come on in the room. <clears throat> come on in the room. Come on in the room. All right, Chastity, good, good afternoon. Come on in the room. Come on in the room, saints of God. Cheryl, Jordan, good afternoon. Come on in, welcome. Erica, God bless you. Come on in, welcome. Good afternoon, Sister Brooksy. God bless you. Come on in. Erica, God bless you. Come on in. Sister Beacon, God bless you. God bless you. Come on in. Welcome. Come on in. Molly B., God bless you. Welcome. Vera, Vera Harmon, God bless you. Come on in. Come on in, saints of God. coming. Uh, Paulette Lewis, God bless you. Come on in. I see you coming in. All right, we're going to start our Bible study on our last series uh, tonight, our closing series on uh, controlling the tongue. Uh, good evening to everyone that's on. Please share this message, this word, this um, lesson tonight. Uh, please share it with your family, your friends, your colleagues. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you as we seek your presence again, as we're so grateful for this another privilege of studying your word. We pray now, Lord, that you would grant unto us the wisdom and the insight that only you can give as we see clearly, Lord, what you are saying to us. Not only see, but hear what you're saying. God, we pray for those who are on their way. We pray, Lord, that you would touch them. And Lord, we pray for our sick, for those who are struggling uh, with whatever problem they're going through. Uh, we pray that you would help them. And now, Lord, I ask you to help us as we study how to control our tongue and how we speak to the end, Lord, that what we speak will give your name glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Good afternoon to everyone. Again, welcome to our Bible study on controlling the tongue. I want to call your attention back to Colossians, <clears throat> excuse me, chapter four. Colossians chapter four. <clears throat> excuse me. And let's read uh, together verse six as we <clears throat> study this scripture again. Colossians chapter four. Verse 6, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. Amen. That's the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Listen, the last time we met, we ended with the acronym SPEAK, and uh, we talked about how we ought to think before we speak, uh, how we ought to control our tongues, that our words be edifying. Uh, we talked about uh, as we, we ought to refrain from attack words, refrain from gossiping. Uh, we remember that our words do matter and what we say can hurt people. And it is not our intention to hurt anyone as a child of God. Therefore, we have to be conscious uh, we have to be intentional as to what we say and what we do not say. So we think before we speak, is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? And then uh, to speak, is it sweet? What we're saying, is it sweet? What we're saying, 
Uh, is it supportive? Uh, and then we uh, P, is it polite? Is what we're saying polite? Is it polite? Uh, is it kind? That's what the, the P stands for. E, is it edifying? Is it empowering? Is it going to, to extol? Is it going to esteem someone? If it's not going to extol or esteem or empower or um, is it going to give enthusiasm? Uh, if it's not going to do any of those things, then we may, might want to be careful what we say. And A, is it affirming? Is the word affirming? Is it affirming what we're about to say? Uh, is it positive? Uh, many times we speak and what we say is negative, but we want to be affirming. And then lastly, is it knowledgeable? Do you really know what you're saying? What you're about to say, do you really know? Is it truth? Is it a fact as to what you're getting ready to say is going to be very helpful before you speak? Amen. I'm reminded of, of a story. I'm reminded of a story as a man was upset because he and his wife had an argument. And while sitting in the bar rehearsing in his mind what had gone on in his home that was so devastating and upsetting and unsettling to the point that it had him sitting there in the bar talking to himself, uh, thinking about his family and how the argument had escalated to that point uh, that it caused him to wonder, you know, you know, how did this really happen? And while sitting there, the story goes on to say he hears this piece, this, uh, this whisper, um, this piss coming to his ear. He, he hears this uh, a noise that comes from a dead fish hanging on the wall, a plaque, a dead fish that's a plaque, a trophy hanging on the wall who speaks to the young man to his surprise while this fish is speaking to him. The man speaks back to the fish to ask the fish, is he talking to him? And the fish said, yes, I'm talking to you. I want to know if you're okay. And the man uh, just looked at him and said, uh, you know, what he had gone through. And the fish said to him, you know, I discovered that we all have something in common. The both of us have something in common. To the man's surprise, he wondered what did the fish have in common with him. And the fish said to him, both of us would not be in this bar if we kept our mouth closed. <laughs> if we kept it, the fish kept his mouth closed, he wouldn't have been hanging up as a, a plaque, a trophy. And if the man kept his mouth closed, he would not have been in the bar rehearsing over in his mind what had happened talking to himself. It is no surprise, my brothers and sisters, that many challenges that people find themselves in could have been really easily avoided. <clears throat> if they had been more careful about what they allowed come out of their mouth. Uh, a lot of people uh, have been sorry for what they say. What kind of words, I might ask to you, ask you tonight, what kind of words have come out of your mouth lately? Uh, what kind of conversations have you been having? Uh, what are some of the things that have come out of your mouth when you were upset? Uh, are you controlling your mouth or is it controlling you? And the reason I ask that is it's important because many times, well, all the time rather, what comes out of your mouth starts in your mind. It's in your mind. The mind, you gotta, that's why you have to even ask God to, to help you even in your thinking. Uh, it, it starts in your mind. And it's important to put, <clears throat> to put our mouths like the rest of our lives. And that is we need to go under new management. We need to be under control. Before we control our mouths, we have to control our minds. That's why the Bible says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by
by the renewing of your mind. Our mind, whether you know it or not, it controls our actions. Did you know that? Our mind controls our actions, including what we say. Uh, when we tonight, uh, brothers and sisters, our mind controls everything that we do, how we do it. It starts in the mind. When our mind focuses on positive, wholesome things, our actions, can I tell you, will also be positive and wholesome. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, think on these things. Think on these things, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are holy, things that are true, things that are praiseworthy. My God, think on these things. When we fill our minds with negative or degrading things, our actions also will be what? Negative and degrading. That's why we have to ask God, Lord, keep my mind. Have you ever, have you ever done something that <clears throat> you knew was wrong? You have done something you knew was wrong? And when you ask yourself what you were thinking when you did it, you ask yourself, what was I thinking when I did that? If, if we're honest tonight with ourselves, we can admit, brothers and sisters, that thinking negative, self-centered things. Amen. We, 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 we have to admit that. When, when, when our lives, can I tell you, when our lives are under the management of God, we must replace the negative with the positive. And so many of us live in the negative until we see no positive. We see no good because we're always living uh, in the bad, in the dark, and therefore we don't see the light. We don't see the good. We must allow, can I tell you, the positive, wholesome thoughts to coach, move, and shape us into the person that God wants us to be. Hallelujah. That's what we must do. Allow, allow the positive, wholesome thoughts to coach us into uh, the person that God wants us to be. And God wants us to be whole. He wants us to be wholesome. He wants us to be happy. Uh, he wants us to be one who is enthused, one who is excited about life. When we praise, when we worship and read the word of God, when we focus our minds on the things of God, hallelujah, we will find out that we will see things a lot better. We will have a different perspective. My God, we will see things from a different vantage point. Uh, it will be more positive for us. In fact, many of us would get better rest. We would enjoy life better if we would learn how to allow our minds to be controlled by God, which uh, uh, will, uh, our minds will then control our tongue as to what we say and what we don't say. Because can I tell you, the world, the world is waiting to feed us all sorts of negativity. Did you know that? The world is waiting to feed you all kinds of negativity, uh, defilement and evil things. That's because that's where we are. That's, that's the climate that we live in. Uh, defiling things start coming at us from different angles. They can also come through our friends. They can come through our family. What goes through your mind when you when when you when you allow this to happen, you'd be surprised, brothers and sisters. It will cause you to speak those things that sometimes will cause you regret. Hallelujah. So. I, I, listen, I just want you to know tonight that whatever we say tonight, the Bible says, let our speech always be with what? <clears throat> with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer each other. My God, that's a great word right there. Many of us, brothers and sisters, uh, have the tendency to allow our minds to become hostage 
Uh, and so because our minds are hostage, we have no control over what we say and our words are not seasoned with salt. We have to think before we pull the trigger. My God, we have to think about uh, how it's going to sound, how it's going to come out. Think about it in this way. If the tongue is considered like a sword, then it could harm everyone near it, including yourself. If your tongue is considered sharp like a sword, because that's what the Bible says, our tongue is sharp like a sword, then it has the potential to harm everyone around you, including yourself. My God, we all at some point of our lives have allowed our emotions to gain control over us. And, and before we knew it, uh, beloved, we have said something so hurtful, so destructive and vindictive that we wish we could take it back. <clears throat> yes, all of us have been there. We wish we could take it back. Even if we could take it back, uh, our relationship still would never be the same. That's why you have to be careful what you say. <clears throat> That's what the Bible teaches us. Our mouths are similar to a gun. <laughs> our mouths are similar to a gun. And when we pull the trigger, you can't pull the bullet back. You, you, you can't retrieve the bullet. Although we may have apologized uh, unfortunately, many of us became recipients of the bullets and uh, that have been shot at us through the mouths of many people, and we found it uh, especially difficult repairing the damage that it caused. It has caused uh, irreparable damage, and we find it difficult to find a way to repair what came out of our mouth so that we could heal. <clears throat> so, I have, and, and, and many of us know what I'm talking about. And I, I ask the question, have you ever heard uh, the saying, sticks and stones, and I'm sure you have, make my bones, but words will never hurt me. That statement is not true. That state, what comes out of your mouth, your mouth is like a gun when you pull a trigger. When it comes out, listen, you feel much better if you were hit by a stick or a stone than, than you would with the words that have come from some people's mouths. So there are people right now that are listening to me who are scarred, have been scarred from your youth, from your uh, t uh, tender teens, uh, uh, from your uh, thrilling 20s and, and your thriving 30s, your forcible 40s, your, 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 your fabulous 50s, your settling, uh, uh, soaring 60s, your settling 70s. Many of you have been hurt from way back. Your aching 80s. You still ache from the words that were spoken to you in your tender teens because what was said to you, it penetrated your heart and your heart is still healing from those words. That's why it is imperative that we place our tongues under new management, that we place our tongues under the control of the Holy Spirit, that we let our words be seasoned with grace and salt, that we may know how to speak to one another. That's what the word of God is teaching us tonight. We have to learn that that though we can say some things, it does not always mean that we should say it. Just because we can say some things doesn't always mean that we can say what we want to say. I don't care how grown we are. It does not mean that we all always can say what comes to our mind. Amen. If you're honest tonight, you, there have been many times when when you have wanted to say something, but everything in you uh, was telling you not to say it. And all of us have probably lost count of how many times that we have said things that we wish we could have taken back. It is crucial tonight that we manage our 
tongue. That we keep our mouth. In fact, James chapter 3, verse 7 in the NIV. James chapter 3, verse 7 in the NIV says all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. My God. But no human being can tame the tongue. No human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil. That's what the Bible says. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. Words are more are very powerful. Words are very powerful. And that's why we have to ask God to control our tongue. Our words are so powerful, powerful that, 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 that they are able to lift someone, my God, who is down or it can tear someone down who is in a good mood. That, that's what your tongue can do. You can, you see that. You've been down and yet you may have been around somebody, but their words were so powerful. Uh, they were affirming. They were encouraging. They were uh, uh, exciting. They were extolling. They were esteeming uh, uh, the words that were spoken to you. Uh, they were so uplifting uh, until uh, you were down in loaded bar. You were down so low until, as Bishop Thomas would say, getting up wasn't even on your mind. But the words that were spoken to you gave you power to pick yourself up and to encourage your heart to that you could move on and keep uh, going forward and you could keep pressing on. But then there are other times when words were so hurtful, you were in a good mood. My God, you went to work in a good mood. You went to church in a good mood. You went to a meeting in a good mood. You came home in a good mood and somebody's words were so hurtful, it brought you down. And all the good mood that you were in just dissipated. That's how powerful words are. That's why the Bible says it's a restless evil, your tongue, and it is full of deadly poison. My God, that's what the word of God says. God knows, can I tell you, I want you to know tonight that God knows that we cannot tame our own tongues. That's why we need to ask God every day, Lord, control my tongue, Lord, and teeth. Control what I say. Speak through me. Let me think before I speak. He knows that it's difficult for us to control our own tongues, and that's why he wants us to stay in a close relationship with him. Walk with him. Be open to him. Walk in the spirit. Be led of the spirit. My God, it is such a blessing in knowing God that, that, that possesses the ability to do things that we cannot do on our own. And that is he's able to control our tongue. It makes sense to me tonight, brothers and sisters. Now, uh, it makes sense to me tonight to let God take control of my mouth. It makes sense to me now when people used to say, God, hold my tongue. You ever heard people say that? Lord, hold my tongue. I now understand that there's, there will still be some things that would have gone out of my mouth that would have been very hurtful if I had not asked God, Lord, keep my tongue, keep me from speaking that which would hurt and would be evil toward mankind. So we got to keep that in mind. James 3, James 3 and uh, 3 through 4. James 3, 3 through 4, NIV Bible says this. James 3, 3 through 4. The NIV Bible, James 3, 3 through 4, says when we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. You, you, as large as a horse is, if a bit is put into the mouth of a horse, because the, the corners of the mouth of a horse are very tender, and if the bit is pulled or is there some force on it of any kind, the person that is controlling the bit uh, or the rein can turn that horse, that whole animal 
in any direction he or she wants to turn them. That's what the Bible says. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Hallelujah. And wh what the Bible here is doing is comparing our tongues to bits in the mouth of a horse. In other words, something as small as a bit into the mouth can control the direction we are heading no matter how big or powerful we think we are. That's what that's saying. Hallelujah. There are many, there are many, and there are more there may be. Let me say that. There may be someone, brothers and sisters, tonight who think you are big and bad. Uh, but you listen, you need to let God control and your tongue so he can direct you in the way that he would want you to go. My God, all of us, all of us need to ask God, Lord, control the direction of my tongue, the direction that I go so that I may not do anything that will bring a reproach against the name of God. That's what this scripture and this text is saying to us tonight. It's trying to teach us to start watching our mouth more closely. Some people are wondering why they cannot get their children to respect them. Why is it that, that you can't get your children to respect you? Well, uh, someone in your home or someone uh, that you are around constantly. Well, could it be that every time you get upset, you speak to them disrespectfully? You get upset, you speak to them disrespectfully. When they get upset, they speak to you disrespectfully. Someone may be wondering why his or her marriage is falling apart. Could it be because when you get upset, you speak disrespectfully? And then you get upset when your spouse speaks disrespectfully to you. Someone may be wondering tonight why he or she struggles with maintaining employment. The truth is, if you are, uh, if you were the boss and, and had an employee that talked the way you talk, my God, you would have them fire yourself. You would have fired them too. So we have to remember what we say and make sure that our tongue is controlled and seasoned with grace and seasoned with salt. Make sure you control your mouth because it is as powerful, it is mighty, and it is strong. You may have the attitude that people need to accept you the way you are. And we have people saying that. I've Heard people say they need to accept me the way I am. This is just me. This is just how I am. Now I just talk. I just tell it like it is. But you can't always do that. You cannot always do that. That can cause somebody some unnecessary hurt. If that is the case, then you have to understand that the very destructive seed, the very destructive seed that your tongues plant will come back to you. You hear that? The very destructive seeds that your tongue plants will come back to you. That's why you can't stand up and say, I say what I want to say. I'm grown. I'm 21. They don't tell me what to say. The words you say. Listen, you heard me say, make your words what? Soft and sweet. Because the words you speak, you may have to eat. So you you can't you cannot say that it will come back to you. Do do you do not get upset at the soil when it only gives back what you had planted. <laughs> Don't get upset with the soil when it when it only gives back what you have planted. Before you can manage your mouth, you have to understand the power that it holds. You have to understand the power that it holds. What makes this difficult 
is the fact that many of us have been raised and exposed to people who only knew poisoned language. That's why some people are like that, because they were raised like that. They were exposed to people who only knew poison language. But language, but the Bible says, make your speech and let it be grace a season with always. Let your speech always, not sometimes, not half the time, but always be seasoned with grace. Seasoned with, excuse me, salt, that you may know how to answer one another. There is a reality that many people are simply victims of their own environment. Don't let the size of that little thing in your mouth fool you. My God, don't let it happen. Don't let the size fool you. Are y'all hearing me tonight? So Ephesians, and I close with this. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 25. Ephesians, and I'm reading from the Message Bible here uh, because you need to understand that, that, that you have a weapon. You see, your tongue is a weapon and you should ask yourself if you are uh, doing good or, or are you doing evil with your mouth because your tongue is an uncontrolled weapon. Uh, what am I talking about? It goes beyond foul language. When I'm talking about goes beyond foul language, your, your tongue is a weapon. It is harmful. It is harmful. It is destructive. It is dangerous. Go to Ephesians chapter 4, verses tw uh, verse 25. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25. I want to read uh, from... Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4 and 25, let me read, I want to read, uh, first of all, from the uh, New King James Bible, then I'll read from the, the, the Message Bible. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Hallelujah. We are members of with one another. Be angry and do not sin. Listen, the message Bible says this. What this adds up to then is this. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we are all connected to each other. After all, when you lie to the others, you end up lying to yourself. So you have to speak the truth. Make sure that what you say is truth. Make sure that what you say is going to be edifying, is going to be productive. Uh, Ephesians uh, 4, 31 through 32. Uh, Ephesians 4, 31 through 32. 4, 31 through 32. And the word of God reads on this wise. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Let it be put away from you. With what? All malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. So we control our tongues so that we don't speak evil. We refrain from speaking lies. We refrain from speaking that which is uh, evil. Our words are to be edifying. We are always commanded through the word of God to speak the truth and to be gentle in what we say. And that's the word of God for you on tonight. Again, and I close, be careful what we say. All of us have the potential of hurting and our objective should not be to hurt, but to help. God bless you tonight. I hope this word has been edifying and encouraging as we have spent four weeks dealing with controlling the tongue. And it's my prayer as we grow older, that we grow in wisdom, that we grow seasoned saints, that we become seasoned saints and our words be seasoned with grace and uh, salt so that we know how that we ought to speak to one another. 
Father, tonight we thank you as you've spoken to us through your word. Your word is truth and power. God, we ask that you will anoint our tongues afresh. Forgive us for speaking anything ill against our neighbor. You told us that every idle word that comes from our mouths uh, is going to be justified or condemned. It will be judged one way or the other. God, we ask that you would uh, allow us to speak that which is good and not evil. Help us to think before we speak. Help us, oh God, to be mindful that you have called us to encourage, to empower, to affirm, to, to, to be polite, to be supportive, uh, to, to speak that which is truth. God, help us to be mindful, uh, Lord, that if it is not something that's going to benefit anyone, sometimes we need to just sit still and be quiet. God, help us to be more cordial to one another, more kind to each other, more loving to one another. God, to the end that people will see you in us. Help us to represent the kingdom well, represent you well by how we talk, how we respond, how we speak in the name of Jesus. Let there not be any clamoring or bitterness or anger or words of strife and malice, but let it be words of goodness and peace and joy and happiness in the name of Jesus. God, we pray tonight for every sick person on our sick list at First Baptist, while the names are too numerous to call, we pray, Lord, for their total and complete healing in the name of Jesus. Those who are in the hospital, those who have recently come out of the hospital, those who may be on their way to the hospital, God, we pray that you would manifest your power strongly in their lives. God, we pray tonight that you would mend families together. Lord, we pray tonight that you would help those who are struggling financially. We pray tonight, Lord, that you would touch those who are infirm, those who are depressed, those who are going through mental anguish in the name of Jesus. We pray for pastors who are navigating through these turbulent seasons. We're praying tonight for churches and in particular, the First Baptist Church, God, that you keep her, Lord, strong, keep her, God, focused, keep her, God, with her eyes looking to you as the author and the finisher of her faith, Lord, keep adding to our church, prepare us for increase, for growth, in the name of Jesus, help us, and Lord, that we might have the resources to pay off all of our debts, oh God, so that we can do more outreach in the community. You told us, Lord, in your word that you would grant unto us the desires of our heart. And in the name of Jesus, we are pouring out our heart to you. And we know, Lord, that when we take care of your house, you will bless our house. Hear our prayer tonight in the name of Jesus. Move mightily as we ask you to bless our country, our land. Hallelujah. There's war going on everywhere. Bless, oh God, the soldiers that fight for the luxury of how we live. Bless, oh God, their families. Bless our president and vice president. Keep them strong and safe and healthy. That his cabinet, in the name of Jesus, be with those persons in Ukraine. Lord, you cover them. You fight for them. You be their battle axe. You be their strong tower in the name of Jesus. Come against, oh God, the forces of evil, the enemy, hallelujah, that tries to empower and overtake in the name of, back them down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're going to do, uh, what you're doing, what you're about to do. And we pause, Lord, just to say thank you for it all. So hear our prayer tonight. Lord, keep us and we shall be kept. In Jesus' name we pray. And we thank you for it all. We know our prayers heard and answered. We call it done and it is so. In Jesus' name, the people of God said, amen. Amen. God bless you, saints of God. Spread this word tonight. Spread this word tonight. The, 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 the benefit of controlling your tongue. Let your words be seasoned with salt and grace. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Listen, sow a seed tonight. A five dollar sow a seed tonight of five dollars. I hope that you were blessed. Hope that you were helped. Thank you for your thumbs up. I see them coming in your hearts. God bless you tonight. God bless you. Listen, sow that seed tonight of five dollars or stop it by the church or put it in your envelope. Bless the Bible study lesson. Love you guys. And I hope this was very helpful to you as it has been helpful to me. God bless you. Love you guys back. 
as I see you sending your hearts up in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. <clears throat>